Welcome to Lost Creek Nature Retreat. We've been fortunate to have been the host to a mating pair of Canada geese almost every year of the 30 years I have been here at Lost Creek. I'm Andrew Hirsch. Join me as I tell the story of the life cycle of the Canada goose. Every spring, the geese return to Hirsch Pond to set up shop on this peninsula. It's a prized location as it provides good protection from land predators. We call it Goose Point. Canada geese mate for life and a pair made up of a goose and a gander will often return to the same nest site year after year. They will spend their summer in their northern breeding zone and then migrate south several thousand miles to winter over in their southern range. Mated pairs compete for the best nest sites and try to plan their spring arrival as soon as the ice is cleared in order to stake out the best spots. Finding a spot and keeping a spot are two different things, as the couple has to constantly fend off all challengers. After the goose has chosen the nest site, she will set about lining it with dried grasses and soft down pulled from her breast. Once the nest is complete, she will lay one egg a day, but will not start brooding the nest until all her eggs have been laid. The eggs will not develop until the brooding process has begun. This ensures that all the goslings hatch out close to the same time. Once the goose starts brooding, she will sit on the eggs 24 hours a day, leaving only occasionally to drink and feed if ambient temperatures permit. During this whole process, the gander is never far away. It's his job to fertilize the eggs, chase off any other males, and protect his mate and the nest from predators. The eggs will begin to hatch in 28 to 30 days, and the mother will stay with the nest until all of the eggs have hatched. This is an extremely vulnerable time for the goslings, and the mother makes every effort to hide them under her wings. Those adorable little fluff balls stick out like a sore thumb, especially to predators from the air above. Keeping those rambunctious little fluff balls under cover is easier said than done. There's a whole new world out there, ready to explore, and they're raring to go.
They are full of energy, and it's only a matter of time before they break out of their mother's protective cover. Only three out of the six eggs have hatched, and they are just going to have to wait for their siblings to arrive. Mom sure has her wings full. All of the eggs have hatched, and the goose joins up with her gander to lead the goslings to water, never to return to the nest again. They immediately take to the water like little motorboats, and are a real joy to watch as they paddle their hearts out to keep up with mom and dad. The standard formation is mom in front and dad bringing up the rear. The males have slightly larger bodies and a longer neck. I think Canada geese make the best parents ever. Their constant vigilance, dedication, and cooperation make them one of the most successful parents in the animal kingdom. Throughout all the years that I observed the geese here at Lost Creek, I can count the lost goslings on one hand. It's hard to believe because no sooner than they leave the nest, the first predator shows up. An osprey has spotted them in the circles above, looking for an opportunity. Osprey are normally fish eaters, but I don't think this one would pass up a tasty little snack given the chance. The parents head for cover, but they pick a very steep bank that seems impossible for the goslings to scale. One of them finds an opening in the tall grasses and amazingly starts to climb the bank. One by one, they follow the leader, their little legs frantically trying to find footholds, and their useless wings flailing away. Instinct tells them they are in danger, and they rush to get back to the protection of their parents. One of them is unable to make the climb starts to panic. The mother knows how vulnerable the gosling is now to the osprey's attack and lets out a warning hug. As she makes her way back down the bank to round him up, he finally makes his way to the top, exhausted and totally spent. Before it can catch its breath, she decides to take the family back to the water. Come on, Mom, give me a break. Gosling isn't the only thing on the Osprey's menu. This colorful mallard is a sitting duck out on Goose Point. 
He makes the right decision to head for cover. The goslings are even more vulnerable on land, so the parents always try to keep them between each other. Now on land, size difference is even more noticeable, with the larger male and his long neck bringing up the rear. Parents will alternate between grazing the goslings on the lawn during the cooler mornings and evenings and aquatic feeding during the day. Now that the breeding season is over, there's no more need for territorial defense. Other local families start to show up to take advantage of the nutritious aquatic plants. average brood is five goslings, but it can vary from as low as three for a new couple or as high as nine or more for an experienced pair. The pond record was set one year by this visiting pair with twelve, count them, 12 goslings. Boy, would I have liked to have seen that nest. Here we see a pair going into stealth mode, keeping a low profile while they sneak away. Aside from birds of prey, predators on land include coyote, fox, fisher, and raccoons. Aquatic predators are the snapping turtle, mink, snakes, and rarely even fish such as a pike or a large bass. All those predators might just be the reason why the parents mysteriously disappear into the woods when goslings are at this age, not to be seen again for several weeks. The next time they show up, they are about the size of a chicken and have basically turned into eating machines. It's at this age I think they start to look like baby dinosaurs. It's not hard to see why they say that birds are dinosaurs' closest living relatives. Families will group together and form what's known as a creche. The more eyes to watch for danger, the better. It's like one big happy family. If you watch the adults, you'll see that they synchronize their feeding. There's always one adult on the lookout as they take turns grazing. Their favorite food on land is grass, but they will also eat seeds, berries, insects, and worms. 
there's definitely some kind of communication method going on between the adults and the goslings. It seems to be based on body language. The adults seem to be able to signal an alarm without making a single sound, and then switch it off again just as fast. By now, the goslings are losing their soft down coats and are starting to grow real feathers. Warm sunny days bring new growth to the aquatic plants in the pond, and the goslings are now big enough to reach them. Aquatic plants contain much needed minerals and they will spend hours feeding on them, along with algae, invertebrates, and even the occasional small fish. The gosling's adult plumage is starting to show up. You can begin to see the traditional black head and neck with white chin strap. By now, most of them have developed full plumage, and aside from their size, they are exact copies of their parents. You can tell which one hatched last. becoming harder and harder to tell the adolescents from the adults. But one sure way is to see who's paying attention and on the lookout and who's just mindlessly grazing away. On a couple of occasions, I think what I observed was family flight training. They would all start together as a group and run down the lawn, flapping their wings really hard, trying to get some air before they ran out of runway. It was, it was not unlike the Wright brothers' first flight. Unfortunately, I didn't have a camera handy at the time. The osprey stopped in again on its migration back south, hoping for a chance at one of those plump, tender goslings that it missed out earlier in the year. They are all grown up now, and with wings ready for flight, it's time for mom and dad to take them on some short trips to the local ponds and lakes to strengthen their wings before the long flight south. It also gives them a chance to socialize with other geese and check out some prospective mates, as well as learn the area so they can find their own nest sites when they return in the spring. As the weather grows colder, families start to gather together in small groups, and those groups combine into larger flocks.
The first cold snap and heavy snowfall triggers their instincts to fly south and the migration begins. Huge numbers can be seen flying overhead in deformation, a technique that allows each bird to conserve energy by drafting the bird in front of it, lessening the wind resistance. As the lead bird gets tired, it will fall back and another bird will rotate into the lead position. The honking can be heard for miles as it draws in more flocks along the way. After wintering over down south, the whole family returns together in the spring. The kids head out to find mates and nest sites of their own as Mother Goose stakes claim on Goose Point and the whole process starts all over again. <laughs>